Fatty acid synthases produce long lipid chains in the cell, such as the acyl chain components of membrane lipids. If we black box its inner details, we can describe the inputs as acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA, and the product is a fatty acid chain. These inputs and outputs are the free-floating, non-complex molecules. Most bacteria and plants encode fatty acid synthases as multiple polypeptides, while others encode it as one giant protein. Whether a megasynthase is composed of one gene or multiple genes is largely immaterial to their function, but leads to different gene structures at the DNA level. FAS inputs one acetyl-CoA molecule and many malonyl-CoA molecules and outputs one acyl chain. First, an acetyl-CoA molecule becomes bound by a thioester linkage to the ketoacyl synthase domain of the fatty acid synthase. This two-carbon unit is the initiator for the polymer being made. It will end up on the alkyl end of the fatty acid. Also, a malonyl group is transferred from malonyl-CoA to the ACP domain, also as a thioester linkage. The two thioesters are now reacted with one another in the condensation step. Subsequently, additional reactions will occur before the cycle repeats itself, growing the enzyme-bound intermediate two carbons at a time until it reaches some length. Once that reaction is reached, the new fatty acid molecule is released from the enzyme as a free acid by hydrolysis or by transesterification with CoA to obtain a CoA derivative. Let's go back and look at it in more detail. This all begins with CoA thioesters of acetate and malonate. Coenzyme A is this large molecule whose structure is largely irrelevant except for the presence of a thiol on one end, in red. There are other enzymes in the cell that perform this esterification reaction resulting in the thioesters acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA. The first step was loading of the acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA onto the enzyme. Those are simple esterification reactions in which one thiol replaces the other. The result is that CoA is released to the cytoplasm and the monomer units are now attached to the enzyme. In the second step, malonyl-CoA is decarboxylated leaving behind an enolate. The enolate is nucleophilic and in the next step it will attack the thioester of the growing acyl chain and in the process transfer it to the ACP domain. We have now joined our monomers to the growing chain. I've grayed out that first step in this diagram, which corresponds to the condensation reaction. We now have this diketothioester linked to the acyl carrier protein. The fatty acid synth synthase now reduces this intermediate to the alcohol, eliminates water to make the alkene, and then reduces again to make the fully saturated alkyl chain. Each one of these condensation, reduction, elimination, and alkene reduction steps occurs within a different domain of the megasynthase. Once the cycle is complete, the growing chain remains attached to the ACP and can begin another round of elongation. The class of fatty acid-derived metabolites includes most membrane lipids, prostaglandins, and insect pheromones, to name a few. If the synthase performs every reduction step in its cycle for each malinated adds, the result is a fully saturated alkyl chain such as palmitic acid shown here. Those intermediates can be released as free acids or CoA derivatives. At this step of biosynthesis, we can black box the fatty acid synthase because our fatty acids are no longer associated with the enzyme. A large number of lipid variants operate by tailoring of this complete fatty acid chain. Here the insect pheromone bombacol is biosynthesized by two rounds of oxidation to double bonds followed by reduction of the thioester to a free hydroxyl group. This process of modifying a molecule after it has left some type of megasynthase is called a tailoring reaction. The logic of allowed reactions for tailoring is no different than any other case involving monofunctional enzymes, thus we do not need to consider it as a separate subject. However, there are other types of things that can happen that do not allow you to black box fatty acid biosynthesis. Here, the amino acid isoleucine is converted to a CoA thioester, which replaces acetyl-CoA as the initiating unit for the synthase. The resulting product has a branch structure at the end, resulting from the amino acid's incorporation. Still other lipid biosynthesis pathways involve intervention while the fatty acid is under construction, or tailoring step may be performed while the substrate is still a covalently attached to the synthase. 
In this example of anacardic acid biosynthesis, a series of atypical modifications happens while the fatty acid is still attached to the enzyme. Additionally, the system begins with loading of complete fatty acids. Thus, this pathway breaks the simple monofunctional model in complicated ways. It is not always clear whether a pathway involves soluble intermediates or not, and this is particularly true for fatty acid-based secondary metabolites.